So in this video, we're going to talk about a different uh, collision resolution strategy called linear probing. Now, we previously talked about separate training, but separate training actually has some problems. The most uh, obvious, the most serious one uh, for those of you who understand the kind of computer architecture a little bit is that um, these linkless nodes, because you know the fact that they are just pointers, every node is pointing to the next node somewhere else in the memory. So all of these nodes can actually live all over the memory, which is actually very, very bad for caching. Caching is a way to you know kind of predict where the next things are going to be and uh, kind of make the access to them much faster. But you know if things are all over the place, it's really hard to figure out where the, uh, your access pattern is. So it's bad for caching and linkless, you know, it use extra memory because of the pointers. And then the linkless can get very long. And if, when they do, you know, when there are a lot of collisions, um, you know, long list, it's going to be slow. So to address some of these problems, mainly the caching problem of separate chaining, uh, what we can do is just make sure, you know, uh, all the items just live in the buckets or in other words you know each bucket can only store one item okay uh, now if there is a collision and collision will happen so the strategy then we will have to find the next available bucket to store um, the, the item now see the this is called open addressing i guess that's you know find the next open address to store your item and in, in order to find the next available bucket, there uh, are different ways to do that as well. So the most obvious one is, you know, just look at the bucket next to the current bucket, and then the next next bucket, and so on and so forth, until you find one bucket that is not used. So this strategy is called linear probing. And so let's let's take a look at how this works. Uh, with some example. So let's say we all want to insert the number 49. There's seven slots. 49 modulo 7 is 0. So we put it at, you know, um, bucket 0. Insert 16. Uh, mod modular 7 is 2. So we put it there. So uh, no problem so far. Now, what happens when we want to insert 7? 49. Um, modulo 7 is 0, so we come back to the 0 bucket, but it's already occupied. So we just go to the next bucket, trying to see if it's available, and it is. So we just put a 7 in the next bucket. And then now um, you should give it a try. What, if, what happens when we insert 14? Where does it go? Assuming you've done the exercise, 14 hash to bucket 0, and we keep looking at the next bucket next next bucket until we find one that's not occupied and we put 14 there okay so that's for insert what happens in the contains operation so what happens when we're trying to find if the number seven is there so first of all uh seven has to bucket zero but it's 49 so okay it's it's not seven so we move on to the next one and then we find the next one it's seven so good we found it okay so what about we'll uh, when we look up a a number that is actually not in the hash table such as 21 uh try to uh maybe you should try to uh, figure that out yourself how does it work all right so the way it works is that um hash 21 hash to bucket zero so uh it's it's now 49 we go on to the next one you know seven and then we go on to the next one it's still not right it's 16 and then we go on to 14 it's still not 21 and then we go to the next one and the next one has is empty so in that case we know we've kind of reached the end of where 21 can possibly be and it's not there so we know 21 is not in the table all right the next operation is naturally remove so uh let's say we want to remove the number seven 
and um, again, seven hash to bucket zero, not 49. And then we look at the next bucket. That's the bucket that used to contain seven. So, okay, we'll just uh, remove the number seven, right? Um, is that the right thing to do? So think about it for a moment. It's actually not the right thing to do because of this reason. So assuming we did remove the seven and mark this thing empty, right? Uh, what happens when we then just look uh, look for the number 14 and see if number 14 is there? 14 hash to bucket zero, and then we move, we move to the next bucket and we see that it's empty. So remember our algorithm, the contains algorithm is when we see a empty bucket, we assume we reach the end of uh, all the possible places where 14 could could have been and so we stop searching that's not good though because we know 14 is somewhere um, after this position so we got the wrong answer and that's not good so how do we address this problem so going back to remove seven okay we cannot simply just say the bucket is empty we have to say that this bucket used to contain something, but is now deleted. And if we do that, then we can, um, when the next operation comes, you know, does this hash table contains the number 14, then we can use the same um, contains algorithm that, you know, 14 hash to bucket zero, it's not 49. We come to this bucket. Well, it's deleted. So we should not, and it's also not 14. So we should just keep going, keep going until, okay, we find uh, that number 14 here. So let's do an exercise now that what if at this point we want to find out if the number seven is in the hash table. Please pause the video and give this a try yourself first. Okay, so let's go through it together. Uh, when we see the number 7, we hash it to the bucket 0. That's where we start. Uh, bucket 0 has 49, so that's not equal. So we go to the next bucket. It is 7, so it is equal to the value we're looking for. However, the bucket itself has been marked deleted, so the 7 is not in the hash table. Therefore, we have to keep probing to the next bucket and then the next bucket until at last we've reached an empty bucket and we know that means we've come to the end of the probing sequence and we have not seen the number 7 and therefore 7 is not in the hash table. Now let's consider another matter and that is now that we have these buckets that are marked deleted then during the insertion operation if we run into these deleted buckets can we reuse them to hold the new data we're trying to insert. Let's consider this specific example of inserting the number 14 into this hash table. So 14 is going to be hashed to uh, the bucket index 0 and we'll start probing here. Now when we get to the bucket 1 and we see that it is deleted, then what if we actually put the number 14 into this deleted bucket? Well, as you can kind of see, that actually is a problem, right? Because if we put the 14 in this bucket, and that would mean that we'll stop probing, right? We're done with the insertion. Then that means we won't find the 14 that's already in the hash table, but it just happened to be uh, later in the probing sequence. So in this case, we'll end up with two 14s, duplicate data in the hash table, which is not good. What this means is that we can only put 
new data in empty buckets and not the deleted buckets. So let's think about some performance implication of a linear programming. Now, uh, with any hash table, we, we know at some point um, we have to expand and rehash uh, all, all the items in the table. So, and so when do we absolutely have to do that for a linear probing table? Well, that's when the load factor is one. That means the number of items equal to the number of buckets or the buckets are uh, all occupied. Uh, now, if we actually allow the load factor to even get anywhere near one, that means, you know, uh, many or most of the buckets are already occupied and that means if we have to find uh, any available buckets we probably have to search a most of the buckets in the table and that would actually slow down the searching uh, quite a bit to the point that it's probably going to be near all of them so that is really really not good Another problem with linear probing is the tendency to kind of cluster. And by that, I mean, you know, uh, as we see before, if we start probing, uh, well, if, after inserting a few numbers and, um, and we use the probing to find the available slots, then the buckets around that particular area is all occupied, right? Around this particular area is all occupied. So, that means items that are normally hashed to that area, then they have to engage their own linear probing to find the uh, next available buckets, and that actually further in increase the clustering. So in practice, linear probing is not commonly used, and uh, instead there are better probing mechanisms.